Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to my channel. I appreciate you taking the time to watch this. Um, I'm sure you'll gain some valuable information. So, this video will cover the women bubble. So, on TV and YouTube, um, I hear a lot about the everything bubble from the likes of like Peter Schiff and other uh, doom and gloom economists, but I don't think they're just doom and doom. I think they are speaking some truth. Um, and it's kind of crazy how every day we kind of have all-time highs in stocks and government debt and housing. Everything seems to be going up every day. And just when you're thinking about buying, the price is even higher. Just when you think about getting a home, oh, the price just went up $1,000. Just, oh, that stock you wanted to buy, oh, now it's $10 more. Um, and obviously government debt is just growing exponentially so it seems kind of weird why you know the prices of all these things keep going up and the value doesn't seem to be going up either to be going up commensurate with the rising in the price and so I think the reason for this is because of inflation and inflation today is getting measured incorrectly. It's being measured by prices and the CPI, which is just a basket of prices. And so people are measuring a side effect of the inflation rather than just the inflation itself. If you increase the money supply by printing more dollars, then assets are going to absorb that increase in money. And it's wrong to say oh look at the price of things that's how much inflation we have why not would why would you take that complicated route of having to measure like random objects as opposed to just measuring how much you know money we printed um, I think the reason for this is to distort um, the in, the amount of inflation going on and inflation can really be seen as just a tax on the poor because it hurts the people who save in US dollars and it helps the people who own the assets, the ownership class. And so you have assets constantly increasing in price because of this inflation. But one thing that you never hear talked about um, is the inflation in the price of women. Women? Women. The increase in price of women. And that's what this video will look at. Um, before I go any further, though, please like and subscribe now if you haven't already. Um, very, very, very helpful to the channel growth and the increase in revenue that I get. And I would really, really appreciate if you could take the time to do that now. All right, I'll move on um, with the annoying advertisements. Um, so throughout most of history, women were seen as property uh, by men. Um, and only in the modern age is this not the case. So this is actually, we're living in um, a time that is extremely unique in that women are not viewed as property. It sounds crazy, but that is the case. And if we are to view women in such a manner as property, then it's fair to assume that they do have a distinct value like all of the property. Now, the, pro the value is going to be hard to measure, right? How do you measure, how do you quantify that? In U.S. dollars, I mean, I guess you could probably add up all the costs associated with, you know, taking a girl out to eat, buying a house, raising a family. You need a certain amount of money, and I guess you could look at look at it that way. But the point of the of the video is to show that the price of these things is going up dramatically. Uh, the price of women, rather, is going up dramatically, and it just ever increasing and um, you can see this by how certain people are getting priced out of this market you know that means they can't afford the asset anymore they're getting priced out and so you look at generation Z their sexlessness rate is at I think almost 30 percent according to the study and that study is including participants who didn't lie right so how many people uh, that are young, my age, men, right? And they, obviously they're going to lie if somebody asks them, are you sexless? Of course, no person my age wants to admit that. So if you factor in all the people that probably lied, it's probably way higher than 30%. 
um, of Generation Z, the youngest generation, are sexless right now. And that's higher than any generation ever before. Um, also, look no further than the MGTOW movement and how exponential that has risen from, uh, like I guess, 2016 or so. Um, YouTube, Reddit, 4chan, all these things are exploding with content related to MGTOW. And everybody can sort of relate to this like problem that is it's getting more difficult, you know, to have a girlfriend, have a girl that's interested in you at all. A lot of these girls aren't even interested in marriage, period. They're, it's like not even on their radar, you know, uh, which is something I didn't figure out for a long time. It's like, it was kind of like an underlying assumption, like, oh, I want to get married one day, you want to get married one day. I didn't even question that, but that must be questioned because these you know, women our age, you know, they're not really interested in getting married. They're interested in getting a career and making money for themselves and maybe having some pets and maybe at the age of 29, uh, just before the critical peak, you know, of, of being able to have children, maybe then they start thinking about it which is after they've, you know, obviously other channels and people out there on the internet talk about this, after they um, have hit their peak, well beyond their peak of, like, fertility and beauty and all that. So, um, let's look at some reasons why the price of women grew to such an ex grew to this extent. Um, I think there's a few distinct reasons why, um, and they're simultaneously, like, exponentially like they feed off themselves so you have social media um, online dating you have feminism the me too movement hypergamy and stricter laws that radically benefit women in court and I think hypergamy um, I think all these things really help foster hypergamy and so an example would be like you have um, people on Tinder and Bumble, right? And why would you stick with uh, the guy you've been dating for a year when you have literally thousands, you know, literally thousands of, of men to choose from? Why would I stick with the same one? What is the incentive to stick with one when I can have a thousand different ones and a thousand ones that are better, you know? Why, why would I stay with the same one when I can just, you know, get uh, get money for divorcing my husband, you know? Family court system is so messed up. Like, there's, there's literally, like, the opposite. They're disincentivized to stay with men. So, I mean, what else? The Me Too movement, feminism, you know, women are constantly getting propagandized, too, when they're young that, you know, you don't need a guy that... Uh, you know, single ladies, <laughs> it's like, oh god, it's like, they just, uh, they just can't be helped, right, they're just so indoctrinated into this idea that, you know, the, the, the last thing they want to be is like a stay-at-home single mom, or a stay, rather, sorry, stay-at-home mom who, like, takes care of the house, and like is a good mom like that's like viewed as oppression you know like slavery almost to some extent and so you have all these forces that are just incentivizing women to not be high quality and yet also at the same time have men be priced out of the market so to conclude how is this all gonna end you may be wondering when will the price of this asset go down Will it remain high forever? Will it be generations of men? Millennials and Gen Z, priced out. Maybe even Gen X, priced out forever. You know, it's too high. They couldn't afford kids. They couldn't afford a woman. You know, will the price of this asset remain forever high? Or will there be a sudden crash like 2008? You know, I think it is part in, in part tied to inflation. You know, it is part just how long can we keep this this bubble economy, this everything bubble going. But one thing we can say for certain is that if it remains this high, eventually 
there will be physical resistance. People will start to get more and more aggressive, and things will get more and more chaotic as we can. Obviously, I don't even need to point examples of how this is all happening. Um, one really great point that Stefan Molyneux makes is that an inability that the inability to breed or death is for all intents and purposes the exact same thing to the organism. So if you literally die, your organism is going to fight back. If you have genetic death so you can't procreate, that's the exact same thing as death, at least in terms of the success of the organism. Because success is reproduction. And so you, when you have this genetic death, this, this, this lineage that has gone on for thousands of years is now dead, there will be pushback from the organism. And it's usually going to be violent. In conclusion, I predict that in the future, violence will increase in direct correlation to the price of women. So, the more that these young men are priced out of the market, the more the struggle remains high, the more violence we're going to see in the society until we, we reach some kind of equilibrium. Alright guys, that's the end of the video. Um, I hope you enjoyed my thoughts. Um, just leave me a comment below. I'll read them all. Um, like, subscribe, please. That really helps a lot. And if you want to donate, there's an um, address in the description. That is just um, as much as I can possibly ask for from you guys. So, yeah, I'm going to try to make a video every week. So, once a week uh, until the end of the year. And I want to finish off this first video. First video I've ever done. Um, by saying, be strong, stay confident, stay motivated, go after your goals, and live your life with purpose. Follow your dreams, your desires, and hang in there. Because we're living in the toughest of times right now. So stay strong, and more videos to come. Take care, everybody.